From Chesapeake, Virginia, WHKT presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Now here is Greg Bickaveras. And we are live as always. Thank you, Joe Daniel, the producer. Sports Scene interview show each Wednesday from 12 to 1. Also sports highlights on NNPSTV.com. Sports Scene is the only remaining show from Red Zebra Broadcasting as well. Tell your friends about GJBTV.com. That's Red Zebra in Virginia Beach. Twitter, at Greg Bick, at Sports Highlight, at GJBTV, HR Online Mall Com. And as of several of you know, that we have started Hampton Road Sports Media Hall of Fame. And we have our Twitter handle for that, HRSMHOF as well. More news coming as well. Thank you to the Daily Press for their note as well. Thank you to the military. Harry Minium from the Virginian Pilot will join us. Sponsors on GJBTV.com and Marketplace Sponsors. Guest lineup presented by Mi Casita Mexican Restaurant with two great locations in Virginia Beach. Of course, the tourist city of Hampton Roads, as we like to call it. And, of course, you can see their link on HamptonRoadsOnlineMall.com. Phone line presented by Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville. Special thanks to Coppel Nara and Newport News. Well, Major League Baseball heating up in August and September. Pro tennis going on right now in D.C. Hampton Roads Sports Media Hall of Fame. Exciting news there with a big ceremony in Langley Speedway next year. Tides playing a little bit better. NFL preseason is near. And, of course, college football as well. Great interviews, business segments, highlights, commentary. What teased me off? Thank you for making the habit to listen to Sports Scene Weekly, and we love our regulars, newcomers, and tourists as well. Connect on 1650 AM, 92.5 FM, archived, gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link as well. Listen to Tune In by typing in WHKT on your phone or your computer. It is now 1207. Harry Minium around the corner after this. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. All right, back live right here at 12.08. Greg Picaveras, glad you're with us for Sports Scene up until 1 o'clock each Wednesday. Save the date for it. For those of you that are tourists listening right now, too, please avoid going from Portsmouth to Norfolk. You're going to have to pay a toll. Try not to go that way. Just letting you know early, as we always do, tolls are major drama in our area. We've had this gentleman on Sports Scene. We've had him on Sports Highlights as well. Has worked for the Virginian Pilot for several decades. Was good friends with his brother, Mike, as well. Let's welcome back Harry Minium. How are you, my friend? And I agree with you. Uh, we love our tourists and don't drive from Norfolk to Portsmouth. <laughs> exactly. It's just, yeah. and, and that has really affected, and you've covered news for a long time too, Harry. That's, cover, that's really affected uh, Portsmouth. It's affected the Sports Hall of Fame there. It's affected business there in general. It really has. I mean, the, the Sports Hall of Fame, I was uh, actually went there to talk with Kenny Easley last week. He has a, They let him use an office from time to time there, and the building is closed. It's just, it's just amazing that it's completely closed up. Their website is shut down, and it's not all because of the tolls, but tolls have definitely impacted Portsmouth. Uh, my wife and I decided to go to dinner down there Saturday night. We hadn't been to downtown Portsmouth probably since the tolls were implemented, and it's a delightful place to go to. We went to the beer garden, had, mm-hmm. you know, great German beer, great German food. But it is, it's 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 hurt the economy of downtown Portsmouth and, and in the entire city in a big way. Yeah, really put Portsmouth on the map, and I'm going to talk to Joel Rubin here soon in the next week or so. Really, just uh, it's like hide-and-go-seek trying to find the, uh, the treasure in Virginia Beach, and that's not going to be as convenient because so many people are used to finding a Hall of Fame in one location. They are, and it's, it's, you know, they still haven't quite figured out, or at least they haven't, they haven't told us that they figured out exactly what they're going to do at Town Center. You know, I, I assume that the exhibits are going to be broken up among the buildings there. And, you know, I know that museums are out of fashion and, you know, millennials don't like going to museums. And, I, you know, quite frankly, I, once I, I went to the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame one time, that was all I really needed to see. You, you saw it once and that's all you needed. But, you know, for the people inducted into that Hall of Fame, 
yeah, this is tough for them because they, you know, you you want the, I think they call it the Hall of Honors, you want that to be in a place that's fairly prominent where all the names are and the bios and everything are. And, you know, I hope they're able to, to get that in a, in a good and a high-profile location at Town Center. Talking to Harry Minnie. And Harry, before we get into the sports world, you've covered news like we just said with the tolls and everything else, but... What a dramatic year it's been with Burfoot, the former vice mayor of Norfolk in jail, and, and the Boone issue with him driving recently. Your thoughts on that? Your paper's covered it very well. Well, I probably shouldn't say a lot because I'm a, when it comes to the news side, I'm a reporter, but it is, it's absolutely it's, – this has not been a good year and a half or two years to the city of Norfolk for its reputation. Um, it's It's – it's really hurt the city's reputation all, all over the country, you know, to uh, have former treasurer um, in, in federal prison. And with the Bank of the Commonwealth trial and all that went on there, that was uh, largely a, a, Norfolk, a Norfolk-centered uh, issue as well. It's just not been a good time. And there's, you know, there's apparently more to come. The, the FBI is still working, so we'll see how that all works out. But it's it's. Uh, I know there's a lot of heartache downtown. I know people at City Hall, and there's a lot of heartache down there, and um, among political leaders about the damage this has done. But quite frankly, the, the rumors. You know, when I was covering City Hall, we all heard rumors, and um, a, a number of them proved to be true. Absolutely. Talking to Harry Minium. Harry, you uh, cover the uh, ACC Media Day. Of course, North Carolina is still in the news with your column recently. It is, and uh, I apparently have angered. And by the way, that's at pilotonline.com if you want to find that column. Sure. Um, I've angered a lot of Tar Heel fans. I got a, a number of emails from them, uh, a lot of Twitter hits. Uh, and I think a player from the University of North Carolina actually may have tweeted something to me. It, it, he appeared to be a player, but uh, I mean, the fact is that you know we, you know, if you grew up watching the ACC like I did in in the in the seventies. You know, and then later in the 80s, I mean, you might not have liked North Carolina, but you certainly admired them because they, you know, as Dean Smith called it, the Carolina way, I mean, they really seem to do things the right way. They, they won a lot of games, and, you know, they you know, you know, they had all the money, they had all the fans, you know, they, they were, you know, they were the power of the ACC. But, you know, even if you hated them, you admired them, and, and uh, what's happened the last five or six years with the scandal has has really uh, tarnished their image. It's not just that you know people were taking as uh, hundreds of athletes essentially were taking what has been called fake classes for decades, but the response of Carolina um, to you know doing a cursory investigation and not really trying to get to the bottom of what's going on and. And then once the NCA got involved, you know, they lawyered up and they started, you know, playing word games and blaming Dan Kane from the Raleigh News and Observer, who's an outstanding reporter. He dug most of this up. He should have won a Pulitzer Prize for his work on this, you know, and, and sort of blaming, quote, the media narrative, you know, uh, blaming the NCA investigation on the media narrative. That was, it's just disappointing. Um, you know, I totally Carolina agree. is still a great school. They still have a great athletic program. Um, you know, I saw Larry Fedora at the ACC kickoff. I, I watched him for about an hour. I, I like Larry Fedora. He seems like a good guy. Um, but you know, this this uh, this will all pass. I think the NCA will um, will hit Carolina with some heavy sanctions. And um, hopefully they'll learn from this. And, and, you know, I think they've cleaned up their act now. I don't think there's anything amiss going on at Carolina now. I think they've, you know, they long ago learned their lesson. It's, it's just a shame that they just weren't more forthcoming about all this. Now, they play Old Dominion again this year. A few years ago, Old Dominion had to stop the clock literally because they couldn't handle playing a powerhouse like that then. Uh, will it be well, any- let me let me tell you. I think actually that season they played Pittsburgh, and they lost, I believe, by eleven. They could have won that game. I'm talking and, about Carolina only. I'm just talking well, about that game. Well, no, no. I mean that same season they played Pittsburgh, and they they could have won that game. The problem with it is that Carolina was the last game of their transition season, 
you don't schedule a road game against a really good ACC team. It is your, the last game of your transition season. Um, you know, they, they were all beaten up. They were virtually out of linebackers. You know, it was an FCS program. And, um, you know, it was just uh, Larry Fedora called it the most uncomfortable game he's ever coached in. It was after the first quarter, it was never close. Mm-hmm. Carolina could have scored more than 100 points if they'd wanted to. Right. Talking to Harry Miniam. Harry, um, you talk about you, you've covered news, you've covered sports, you're doing a lot of columns now. Is there something that you enjoy more over the years? You kind of like a combination of both. As we've all gotten older, we evolve outside of sports as you have and everybody else has as well. Well, I really grew up wanting, I wanted to be a, um, a news writer. I wanted to cover politics. And uh, it's a kind of a, you know, I, I graduated from ODU in 1977, and I went. To, I didn't have a job out of school, so I went to VCU, and I was working on a master's degree there. And I heard the Richmond News Leader was, was hiring sports correspondents, so I hired one as a correspondent to cover some games here and there. And... Um, you know, my wife at the time got pregnant, and they had an opening. I applied for it, so that's how I got into sports writing. I stayed in sports writing until 2002, so that's 1979, 78 through 2002. I stayed in sports. I finally covered City Hall for nine years, in Norfolk City Hall for nine years. I'd had enough of that at that point. There were there were so many scandals and so many issues breaking out. I needed a change, and I think they needed a break from me. So I covered ODU football for five years, and I love that. I, I, I love covering just one team or just one beat. That's what I really love doing. But in December, Tom White, my boss, came to me and um, asked me if I would become a sports columnist, that they, we were losing Lee Tolliver to the newsroom, and we were going to hire someone and do some rearranging, so I agreed to do it. So I'm doing columns two or three times a week. I do special projects. I do features. I occasionally do news stories, but actually chasing news stories is what I love best. I just love news. And Lee's covered fishing for years, too. He has, and he's. Uh, we have a new digital, I've forgotten what we call the team out in the newsroom, a new digital team that they go out and they, they will write stories. Some of them appear in the newspaper, some of them don't, but they just go out there and they find news and they break it, and Lee is... Well over a million hits this year online, which is pretty phenomenal. So he's done he's done a great job transitioning to the newsroom. Talking to Harry Miniam, Greg Bickavaris, glad you're with us. Uh, live right here at 1218, 1650 AM, 92.5 FM with Joe Daniel. Producing, of course, archive later, gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link also on Twitter and Facebook. Um, Old Dominion made a bowl last year. Exciting, excellent uh, season. This year, all over again. New quarterback. Who's it going to be? Will they get to the point where they were last year? Even that's a good question. Uh, it, 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 this is a hard team to read because they're they're they have a lot of great players back. I mean, their defensive line has got to be the best in conference USA. Boomney Rutimi, O'Shane Zimenez, Tim Ward. Daniel Opu, those those guys, they are power five players. And Miles Fox and Brandon Tyson, Pat Toll, they're they're all really good players too. So their defensive line is really good. Their defensive backs are great. Brandon Addison, Rob Thompson, they just uh, they they've got twelve or thirteen really good defensive backs. They've got great running backs and Ray Lowry and Jeremy Cox, great receivers. Uh, and Travis Oldham and Jonathan Duhart, but the the problem is this: they don't have experience at quarterback. They don't know they've they got four guys on their roster. And any one of the four could start. They really are shallow in depth on the offensive line. They're really shallow, and they've they've got basically one linebacker back who's ever played in a game defensively. And um, you know they so they're you know you just don't know how good they're going to be. The the big question mark for them is quarterback. Now, I've heard Stephen Williams, Jr., a true freshman out of Washington, is really throwing the ball well, and and I heard this from players because uh, coaches are not allowed to watch players as they're working out during the summer, but players have told me that Stephen Williams, Jr., a true freshman, really has a great arm, has, has shown great leadership skills. Um, but, you know, Blake LaRusso is a starter coming out of spring practice. He's a redshirt sophomore out of Bishop Sullivan High School in, Ches- in Chesapeake Native. Right now he's a starter. Drayton Arnold, a, fresh- a redshirt freshman from 
Myrtle Beach uh, is number two on the jet chart, and number three right now is Jordan Hoy. He's a, a junior college transfer from California. But who knows who's going to start? And, yeah, I think they'll probably come up with a fairly solid quarterback. But can they block people? Can they, you know, can they open holes for Lowry and Cox? And can they tackle people once once they get past the defensive line? They need they need some. They're probably going to have to play a couple of true freshmen at, at linebacker. I know Bobby Wilder doesn't like doing that, but they're going to have to do that. The other thing is their schedule. It's more difficult than last year. I mean, they're they're playing, they're hosting North Carolina at home. And they're playing at Virginia Tech. Two very difficult games. Uh, they start the season against Albany, uh, which is ranked 20th in SCS. They have not played a nationally ranked FCS team uh, since they moved up to FBS. And then they're at Massachusetts, and UMass is not a you know not a great team. But you're going on the road, and, you know, the game with UMass was relatively close uh, until the second half last year, and they've got a lot of people back. So their first four games, they'll probably win the first two and lose the second two. But, I mean, you know, realistically, they could they could start the season 0-4 if, if things don't go their way. They could, you know, they could possibly upset North Carolina and go 3-1. and I know that's that's – that seems like a uh, a bridge too far when you look at that 80 to 20 score back in 2013. But Carolina has a new quarterback, uh, new wide receivers, new offensive line, new everything. They're sure. they're one of the least experienced teams in the ACC. Talking to Harry Minnie Harry, I want to you know we got about 10 minutes left, so I want to get over a few nuggets with you. You mentioned sure. Bobby Wilder. His son had some off the field issues. How transparent has Bobby Wilder been with the off the field issues this year? Um, they generally, the first thing is they are, they're as transparent as any colleges on this, and that is they're not. I mean, they, they don't, they generally don't announce when someone has legal problems. Um, we generally find out through other people. And and let me, let me retract some of that. Some schools will tell you when a kid has, has left the team or has been suspended, and Old Dominion does that sometimes, and sometimes they don't. In the case of Derek Wilder, you have to remember this is Bobby's son. This is really personal. This, 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 you know, if, if it's a hurtful thing when something like this happens. So I, you know, I give Bobby a break on whatever they did with that. They didn't announce it, and um, you know, as 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 you know, it was going to happen whenever there are legal entanglements. You know, we got an anonymous email from someone, and you know that that. You know, you so these things do not stay hidden. They do not stay covered up. Someone tells you about it, and that's how we got it. All right, who's going to make the NCAA tournament first? Jeff Jones, the new women's basketball coach at Old Dominion, or William Mary's basketball coach, the men's basketball coach? Who's going to make it first? That's a hell of a good question. Um, I I, th- I think probably I think Jeff Jones is is going to take um, Nikki uh, a. It's going to take Old Dominion women quite a while to to rebuild. There's just there's not a lot in the gas tank right now. Um, I think they returned something like, you know, I did the math before, something like 22 points of their 70 points, something like that, and in, in scoring back there. And she was able to recruit one player. They're just they're really going to be hurt in the next couple of years. Absolutely. There, there's just you know. A number of good players left when when Karen Barefoot left, and there's just there's just not much there. Right, they lost their their key player as well. So everything is just starting new right there with Old Dominion. But I mean, of course, the alumni want to see a postseason. I mean, they they've been to the NIT. They did very well, made the Final Four. They did very well in Vegas. But those are are not elite tournaments anymore. That's that's true. I, 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 but I tell you, I think people would be satisfied if they went to the NIT Final Four every year. But you're not going to do that. When you, you go to the NIT, generally you're going to lose in the early rounds because you're going to play someone pretty good on the road. Um, there's, you know, Jeff, is, we all know, anyone who's followed Jeff's career knows he's a great basketball coach. And for whatever reason, he's, he's not quite, he's just not, quite been able to get them to turn the corner you know a few years ago they lost in middle tennessee on you know on a late basket that was just a heartbreaker 
you know, had they won that game, they would have gone to the NCAA tournament. I believe Middle Tennessee upset Michigan State that year, that year, if I'm not mistaken. You know, it could have been ODU. ODU had a great team. But you're right, there is some fan discontent. Um, I understand that the luxury suites were not all sold out last year. Um, you know, they just – fans want Old Dominion to – to go to the NCAA tournament, you know, every three or four years because that's kind of what they expected in the CAA. But the bottom line is they're not in the CAA anymore. You know, the CAA, when VCU and George Mason, there was a multi-bid league from time to time. Conference USA, you're one of 14. You're going to Birmingham or Texas or, you know, someplace, you know, west or south, way out of here, and you've got to win three or four games to get there. And that's tough to do. Only one of 14 is going to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, that's one of the biggest downsides to membership in Conference USA. It's great for football. You know, they have five or six bowl bids every year. But in basketball, there's only one NCAA tournament bid. And that's because the bottom of the league with Florida International, Florida Atlantic, is just terrible. Yeah. And so the, you know, the RPI ratings are terrible. And, you know, there's... Yeah, I don't see an easy solution to this. As a matter of fact, I don't see any solution to this other than Old Dominion just, you know, having, you know, great recruiting years and and winning. But the the problem is that Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee and and UAB to a lesser extent are just, you know, they're just, they're recruiting among the top 50 or 100 in the country. They're just recruiting very well. Mm-hmm. And you know it's it's going to be tough to beat them. Yeah, and of course there's no natural rivalry. I think Old Dominion is just beaten up by January with the road trips alone. That's just a lot of road trips. Football is once a week. It's easy to recover. Final question: A couple minutes left. Your thoughts: sure. The Redskins in Richmond, year five. It seems like the buzz is worn off, especially from the Hampton Roads people. I, it, you know, I was reading some stories in the Times Dispatch recently about that, and I, I think the buzz is worn off with people in Richmond too. I, I haven't seen any attendance figures this year, but last year attendance was down. It was down the year before. You know, they they had they had uh, you know consultants had projected that you know 100,000 people a year would would come to practice, would visit Richmond, would stay in hotels, and all that sort of thing, and they've fallen significantly short of those numbers. Uh, the city of Richmond is paying, I believe, about $350,000 per year to, to keep the Redskins there, and, and that's on top of the 10 or $12 million, I'm not sure what the number is, that they spent on revamping this facility for the Redskins. But Richmond Mayor LeVar Stoney says he's negotiating a new contract with the Redskins. I believe they're in year five of an eight-year contract, and he wants a new contract. Uh, he says this is the only um, NFL training camp in an urban area, and I believe he's right. When you look around the league, everyone else goes out into the country somewhere, and he thinks sure. that's important to the city. So yeah. we'll I don't see. think it's going anywhere. Harry, thanks for all that you do for the pilot. Always enjoy talking to you. Um, thanks for your time, your talent, and your treasure at the pilot for entertaining readers for so many decades as well. Thank you very much, Greg. I appreciate it. Very good, and we'll talk to you soon, Harry. You too. Thank you. All right. Harry Minim right there from The Pilot, of course, long time with The Pilot, The Ledger Star. They've evolved a lot online with The Pilot website, too, as well. So this is Sports Scene, all powered by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. we got the news coming up, more Sports Scene to 1 o'clock. It is now 1229, right here on 1650 AM. Stay tuned. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B-I-C-O-G-B at Hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bickavaris in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. I was talking to my good friend Brian Parsons from Wavy recently about the Redskins schedule. Most of the games are on Fox and NBC. It's hard to believe that some stations claim to be the Redskins channel. Most of them are on Fox and NBC. Very few on ESPN. Very few on CBS. The NFL Network, of course, was simulcast one as well as Amazon. But if you want to watch the Redskins, Fox and NBC will be the headquarters this year for 2017, as usual. GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link for archive shows. Visit all the pages of GJBTV.com. I want to thank Harry Minium from The Pilot for joining us in the first half hour of Sports Scene. All right, question to Joe Daniel. Presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News. All this Russian propaganda in the news seems left-leaning, of course. 
Does that affect your thoughts about the first, let's say, eight months of the presidency? Uh, does it affect my opinion? Um, I don't know. I really haven't been keeping up too much. I mean, I know I work at a conservative talk station, but uh, I really haven't been keeping too often with it. So yes or no? A little bit? Yes or no? What would you say? Uh, I mean, of course it affects uh, my opinion a little bit. All right. Very good. Very good. I think it's affected a lot of people's opinion, but let the man do his job. We'll talk about that more and what teased me off a little bit later. Also want to welcome Sakura Japanese Restaurant, brand new in Chesapeake. Go by there and visit. Great all-you-can-eat takeout and dine-in. Go by and see Jasmine and the friendly staff. And, of course, offer uh, a lot of things on the menu like you like, like sushi. Also, they're on order up as well. Walmart Way Crossing, 1437 Sam's Drive. Give them a call at 410-4577. 410-4577 off of Battlefield Boulevard. Sakura Japanese Restaurant. Excellent, elegant Asian restaurant as well. All right, save the date each Wednesday for Sports Scene from 12 to 1. Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Browse, shop, visit, bookmark it, folks. Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Stratford today, their show will start September 13th from 1 to 2 after Sports Scene. And of course, I want to thank Cape Henry Racket Club for the big banner for the Newport News Greek Festival. The fall edition will be October 19th through the 21st. That'll be an indoor event. Go to Newport News Greek Festival.org. You can hear the audio commercial as well the 32nd radio commercial as well so also want to do a special shout out to a a great yorkie who recently passed away people love their pets and of course i had rabbits when i was a kid Uh, janice rollins who is a longtime listener of the show lost her uh wonderful puppy uh paris we wish paris may his memory uh, be eternal with London. Of course, London's the uh, fellow dog, but Paris was a great dog. She was an excellent companion to Janice. And of course, we, people know they love their pets as well. All right, let's switch gears to the Norfolk Ties, our weekly segment with Ian Locke. How are you, my friend? Great, Greg. How are you? Ian Locke, the media relations director. Ian, the ties have been a lot in the news with the national TV highlights. Yeah, we had a we had a pretty good uh, pretty good week. Uh, we had three guys. Uh, three plays make the Sports Center top ten last week, uh, which is, is one a year is pretty good, and three in a week is unheard of. So, uh, and on Monday last week, Chris Johnson made a leaping catch at second base that uh, ranked number ten on the top ten plays. And then on um, Thursday afternoon, Mike Yastrzemski made a leaping catch at the outfield wall that was ended up being number one on the top ten plays. And then Yastrzemski followed it up. Uh, later the next day, uh, playing left field, made a sliding catch that was number three. And then uh, Yastrzemski just Kept off his week on Sunday with hitting a walk-off home run in the game one of a doubleheader. So, heck of a week at Harbor Park, and especially with uh, Mike Yastrzemski. And a lot of local products from the opposing teams, like the Cave Kid. Yeah, we've had a lot of guys come in. Jake Cave um, from Scranton came in. Uh, we've had Ryan Yarbrough, who's an Old Dominion guy, uh, pitches for Durham. And then uh, two guys that also played for uh, Columbus this last week. Um, and, of course, I'm, dropped, I'm forgetting the names, of course, but uh, Kyle Crockett who was from the uh, Hampton area, and then Sean Morimondo, who's a pitcher from Virginia Beach, was, was in town, uh, Ocean Lakes High School. So uh, Hampton Roads and the 757 being represented uh, all across baseball and especially in the International League. Also, I want to congratulate Ian, too. He will be one of the board members for the Hampton Roads Sports Media Hall of Fame, and we'll make our decision in November with several board members to have it at the Langley Speedway. So, Ian, I want to thank you publicly for that as well. Yeah, no problem. Glad to, glad to be a part of it. The Tides, uh, we tweeted also five of the six. They won the last five of the six games. Yeah, five of the last six, ten of the last 13, and we're 13-7 uh, and seven since the All-Star break. So the team has been playing uh, a whole lot better. I think the uh, 13-7 and seven ro- record is actually the second best in the league since the break. So uh, Tides have been getting some, some, some great pitching, some timely hitting, and playing pretty solid defense. And, uh, you know, we're, I don't think we're anyone's uh, fooled in, in thinking we're going to make the playoffs at this point, but uh, we're playing a lot better in the second half. And, um, you know, it's, it's fun to watch the guys playing the best baseball of the season. Yeah, they won 3-2 to two last night. As well, and of course, uh, they've got uh, Durham and, of course, uh, Lehigh Valley coming up as well. 50 and 60, still with 17 games, give or take, at home and several on the road. The team can still get well above 500. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we've got plenty of games left, and uh, including three this weekend. We're playing, uh, actually finishing up a road trip tonight in Gwinnett, and then we're going for a, going for a series sweep there. And then we have an off day tomorrow before a three-game set with Durham. Durham's in first place. Uh, in the division, we play Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we have about I think 17 home games left. So uh, we go on the road after that for a little bit, but 
August 15th through the 30th, I think we, or 31st, I think we play uh, something like 10, uh, 14 out of 17 days at home. So lots of chances in August to, uh, to play well and lots of chances for people to come out to Harbor Park and uh, see the tides. The season ends, home season ends on August 31st. So we got one more month left of baseball and then uh, it's packing up the, the balls and bats until the spring. We're talking to Ian Locke, Media Relations Director with the Norfolk Tides. Greg Bick of Aris, glad you're with us at Greg Bick on Twitter. Ian, of course, uh, rain outs affect a lot of teams. You haven't had too many this year at home. I haven't had too many. I think we've had three or four. Uh, we had one this last Saturday where it was just a just a miserable day all around. Sure. And then, uh, since that rain went by, we've had geez, what three, four, five days in a row that it's just been gorgeous around here. So we'll, we'll, we'd love to have that weather again this weekend. We got coming up with uh, Durham this weekend. Yep, absolutely. We have uh, Friday night. We have uh, hats, a hat giveaway, uh, courtesy of Pepsi and Fox Forty Three. So the first five thousand fans will get a uh, Tides baseball cap. Uh, we're also celebrating uh, the Coast Guard that night. And then we had last week when we had our rain out on Saturday, there was a princess night where lots of uh, Disney princesses will be on the concourse. We've rescheduled that to this Friday. So uh, people can come out and get their pictures taken with the princesses. And then on Saturday, we have Navy night here at the ballpark and post-game fireworks. And then on Sunday is the uh, is our second uh, one of the year, Bark in the Park, where fans can bring their dogs out, uh, hang out, and watch the game uh, with their four-legged friends. So, uh, Three-game homestand, but jam-packed, and uh, hoping for some good weather this weekend and some big crowds. The manager's son has played very well recently. Oh, yeah, Chris Johnson's been great. He, uh has been hitting about 360 since uh, over his last 25 games, hit two home runs last night for us uh, in a 3-2 win. And, uh, you know, it's not surprising. He's got a track record, um, you know, performing at the major league level. This is the guy that finished second in the National League in batting average one year, the, the one year he lost to Michael Kadire. So, you know, he's got a track record. He's been playing well. Unfortunately, he missed the first basically about two months of the season with a broken arm. So it took him a little bit to get healthy. And then, uh, like I said, the last 20, 25 games, he has been just red hot. And uh, that's, I think that's uh, one of the main reasons we're playing well the last couple of weeks is uh, because Chris Johnson batting, you know, in the middle of that lineup is, is really, uh, really performing well. Any more specials for the fans as far as food specials? Uh the Sunday fun day we have on uh, we have every every Sunday where we do um, brunch specials. We have um, chicken and waffles and some mimosas and you know Sunday brunch inspired food on and beverages at the at the ballpark. So that's a that's a fun thing every Sunday. And then uh, we have coming up a little down the road on August fifteenth is our second turn back the clock night where we have fifty cent hot dogs, popcorn, and sodas. So that's uh, mark your calendars Tuesday August fifteenth. We have a seven oh five game. Uh, just happens to be, you know, 50 cent hot dogs against the Iron Pigs. So then I'm not sure how that worked out, but uh, yeah. So that's a, that's always a fun night. Um, so fans can come out, and we'll wear our old throwback Norfolk Tars jerseys as well. So always a fun night at the ballpark, and that's on Tuesday, August 15th. Coming up in a few weeks as well, of course. Uh, you do a lot of social media. The Tides utilize a lot of it. What would you say the pecking order is? Would it be Facebook one, Twitter two? Go ahead and give us your your lay of the land on that. Yeah, it's it's, it's weird. I think uh, you know someone who updates it pretty much nonstop. Uh, sure. Twi- Twitter is something where we'll post these ten, twenty times a day on Twitter because it just it's constant. It's nonstop. It's real time. Facebook's more. We'll have two or three posts a day where. Um, you know, we post you know the upcoming promotions and giveaways and, and some videos and things like that. But uh, Facebook's still the number one animal. It's, it's seen by most people. Um, you know, and then I think after that would be Twitter and then Instagram. Uh, we'll post stuff on there as well. And then uh, Snapchat's growing uh, every every day. We're adding uh, more and more stuff to our Snapchat channel as well, and we're getting more and more people following that. So that's a that's a fun one uh, to have. So lots of stuff uh, always there, but. Uh, Breaking news always, you know, it doesn't matter what time of night, time of day, if uh, something happens, we'll, we'll hop on Twitter and, and tweet it out because you never know when, you know, something's going to happen uh, for the Orioles or just for the Tides. So yeah. it's, it's constant, and, and people who follow us uh, hopefully hopefully are informed. And the Orioles are playing better, too. And, of course, Twitter is more instant, fast. Facebook, you don't want to, like, throw it into everybody's face, but it's, it's almost like Twitter is able to throw all that stuff at once and of course not to mention your wonderful website too yeah absolutely and t- yeah, twitter i mean it's just nonstop. it's you know it's great for game you know as the game's going on if you're not at the game you can follow the tides on twitter and you know see hey after two innings it's scoreless hey hey we just hit a home run in the fifth inning and sure so and so's pitching well and that that's not something really uh facebook design because you're going to clutter up the facebook timeline and people are going to unfollow you pretty quick if, that, if you do that on Facebook. So Twitter is a little different animal. But, um, yeah, our Norfolk, uh, our website, NorfolkTides.com, 
Uh, fans can go on there. We have our whole list of promotions coming up this weekend. You can also buy tickets, uh, check out some of the stats of the team, uh, the roster, and also uh, read up on some of the prospects that we got going on. So lots of stuff on that website, and I uh, encourage folks to check it out. Uh, like I said, we only have about three, four more weeks here of baseball at Harbor Park, so uh, got to get the baseball fix in now. And we'll be talking to you through August 30th. So okay. always a pleasure, Ian. We will talk next week, and good luck against uh, Durham this weekend. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Ian Locke right there from the Norfolk Ties. What an excellent PR director. And, of course, he is one of the new board members for the Hampton Road Sports Media, repeat, Media Hall of Fame with Chuck Hull and myself, and Wade Harrington from the Newport News City Channel. We're going to add probably one or two more for the board for the Hampton Road Sports Media Hall of Fame. We want to welcome Ian Locke from the Norfolk Tides as a board member to the Hampton Road Sports Media Hall of Fame, and also our good friends at Panera, the only nationwide chain that they can say every item is 100% clean. They deliver. They also offer catering. they got great soups, sandwiches, salads, breakfast, beverages, and bagels. Give them a call at 483-3670 and visit them at PaneraBread.com and also 6255 College Drive in Harborview in Suffolk. Food as it should be at Panera. Sports Scene continues after this. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Now, back to Greg. All right, it was good to see my sister Valerie and Maria recently in Virginia Beach. Hope they are doing well as well. And a local tradition is CP Shuckers with locations on Shore Drive and Pacific Avenue. People love their prime rib seafood and much more. You're home for NASCAR, Major League Baseball, of course, the NFL, college football, golf, soccer, tennis, like both locations on Facebook. Log on to cpshuckers.com. Eat or be eaten at CP Shuckers. Great burgers, pasta, seafood, bar bites at Shore Drive with Chef Leon. Go by and see Matt, Mark, and Chris at CP Shuckers. You hear that, tourist? Two excellent locations in Virginia Beach as well. All right, let's welcome uh, Jennifer from Community uh, Nights. Jennifer Brown, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Greg? Very good, very good. Give us an update. What's going on? And tell us about Community Nights. We had you on the show here several months ago. Yes, we are doing wonderful. Um, The bingo fundraiser that we do for our gift program um, is going non-smoking starting tonight. We um, operate out of the Columbia Center down in Newport News. So if anybody is excited to have a smoke-free bingo experience, come on out and see us tonight. Very good. Well, tell us, where is it at? Give us some details. Um, It's off Nettles Drive in Newport News. We're really close to Costco and Jefferson Avenue up here in Newport News. Um, And we start our doors open at 430, and our game starts at 7 o'clock. We've got some really awesome jackpots tonight. So um, I think our highest jackpot tonight is at $2,800 with our instant dollar progressive. But we have two other instant or two other bingo progressives at $1,700 tonight. So there's lots of money to be won. And the entire time you're supporting the local community with our grant program. Tell us about your uh, community nights. And, of course, the website's on Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Tell us all about it. Well, what we do is we are uh, community builders. So the bingo fundraiser goes to support our our gift program, which is our grant initiative fundraising team. So we have community volunteers from all over the Virginia Peninsula that come in to support our fundraiser. And we have over 106 different public school organizations and community-based nonprofits who apply for grants from the proceeds that are raised. So all over the community, the dollars that we raise from this fundraiser get reinvested into our community. Uh, So far to date, after um, just four years of um, running this program, we've put about three quarters of a million dollars reinvested back into our community here. Um, And just the results have just been wonderful to see, and we're just excited. We will very soon hit that $1 million mark of being able to reinvest in our community. How can people connect with you online as well as social media? Um, They can find us on Facebook. Um, If you're just specifically interested in the bingo, we have Community Nights Bingo page, which you can find very easily on Facebook. But to see what we're doing outside of the gift program, you can find us on www.communitynights.org. We also have Community Nights, and you can find us on Twitter. Our handle is Community Night One, and you can find us on Facebook with just our organizational page, which is Community Nights Inc. How about phone numbers or anything? Um, we do, and I'm going to be totally embarrassed because I don't have that phone number sitting right in front of me, so I don't know that one. All <laughs> right, that's okay. And one more time, you have a nice Facebook page. Tell People can like your Facebook page, correct? 
Oh, most definitely. And you'll get all the updates of everything that we're involved in. You can see what our different organizations who participate in our gift program are doing out in the community. It's just amazing to see what our youth are doing who are in our public school organizations, but also what, what organizations like Dreamcatchers are doing, um, Peninsula Reads, Soundscapes. There's so many different organizations that are doing amazing things within our community. And so you'll be seeing stories pop up there about how our grants are being used to enrich our community. And you had some fundraisers, too. You did one a few months ago at Newport News with uh, some at a brewing place. How about future stuff? Yeah, no, we, um, we're gonna, that will become an annual fundraiser for us. That was our jackpot fundraiser where we do an oyster roast. Um, and then we also participate in, um, local, give local 757. And we've got some other stuff in the works, but it's not to a point yet where I can advertise it yet. But yes, we are working on growing. We're hoping to put together a nonprofit incubator where we'll be looking to see where we have some service gaps in the community and work on filling those so that we can enrich our community even more. Very good. Jennifer, enjoy the rest of your day from uh, Community Nights. All the best that you do for your organization. And, of course, encourage people to like them on Facebook and learn more about this wonderful organization and go to their bingo, too. Thanks so much, Greg. Thank you. My pleasure. Enjoy your day. You, too. Bye-bye. All right, Joe Daniel, let's get to what tees me off. What tees you off? Presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. And also our good friends at Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News by Patrick Henry Mall, right there at 12150 Jefferson Avenue. Of course, excellent uh, place to get wings, beer, and sports. Wall to wall TVs, great takeout menu. They got street tacos. They've got, uh, of course, roasted garlic mushrooms, chips and salsa, tenders and max, beverages, of course, and the best wings around, boneless or traditional with all the great sauces that you like. For example, like teriyaki, as well as spicy garlic, Thai curry. They have it all at Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News. Great sides like fries and mac and cheese, salads galore, burgers galore, wraps and sandwiches you pick as well, and, of course, uh, great desserts and a kid's menu, too, as well great party menu and of course shareables great way to socialize with shareables great sides and sodas and get that big lunch menu as well go there and get a quick fast break lunch at b-dubs buffalowildwings.com all right what teased me off joe daniel as well hiccups they can be awkward to hear (laughs) or awkward to have hiccups are the worst you just never can seem to get rid of them you can try holding your breath drinking water, spinning around, whatever, going upside down. They just never go away. And they're always at the most inconvenient time. Never just when you're alone. It's always when you're, for us, when we're on the radio or something, then the hiccups come. Right, or that nasty cough you hear from somebody during the winter especially. Yeah, yeah, that where you just can feel the stuff coming out as they cough. <laughs> right. All right, this is what teased me off. Don't forget the Newport News Greek Festival Fall Edition, October 19th through the 21st. For more, log on to NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Greg Bick on Twitter, G-R-E-G-B-I-C. Of course, uh, awkward elevator rides that go real slow with people you don't want to be on with, or better, worse, they get stuck. Oh, uh, yeah. Ever been in a stuck elevator before? Yes, I have. It's the worst. Yeah, I mean, that's I was bad. in college at George Mason. I got stuck in the elevator. I was ready to call 911, but there were no cell phones. And, of course, uh, we were lucky to have a phone inside the elevator. Oh, good. Uh, that's always good. You know when you send an email to somebody and then they send it back to you with every single email logo image? So you can't just get an email. It's got to be like every logo, social media. How about just send an email? I don't want to see all your links as well and your images on the email. Yeah, I was just uh, doing my signature because I have something like that. I just provide the links. No, like my logos are very small or whatever. Or that text at the bottom. If you're not right. the intended receiver and all that, I, I, I appreciate it. Let's those. keep it simple. <laughs> this is not Watergate, for God's sake. How about misplacing anything? Yeah, I misplaced my wallet, and I got instantly enraged. I hate not remembering. But my wife has a great solution for that. Just put it in the same spot every time. That's what my dad used to say, too. <laughs> Leave it where it was the night before. All right, how about this right here? I want to thank you to the post office in Newport News. I'm not going to say which one. This morning, yours truly put an envelope in one of those blue portal boxes. And, of course, it was not with one a stamp. No stamp was on it as well. They went in there, and they got it for me. 
thank you, Newport News Post Office as well. All right, what else teased me off? Those with agendas constantly saying, hmm, let me think about it. <laughs> when they're not. <laughs> when they're not, and they've already made a decision already. Right, yeah. Kind of condescending. you got to feel really bad, Joe Daniel. This really doesn't concern me because I own my own business. But, and I, of course, we've all been in this situation before working as employees. you got to feel bad for those people that have half-hour lunches. I mean, what can you do oh, yeah. in a half hour? You can't go anywhere. And, you know, it's really sad to even that in today's age of 2017, people only have half-hour lunches. Yeah, pretty much the only option there, I think, is just to bring your own lunch. And so pretty much by the time you get all situated and you eat, uh, you got to go right back to work. No time to diddly daddly or anything. Ah, that's the worst. You need at least an hour. Right, an hour's good. Uh, at least an hour. Of course, you have to drive somewhere and allow time for traffic as well. Of course, uh, sports scene right here every Wednesday, twelve to one. For more, go to gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link. Of course, another thing that teased me off is the media in general not giving elected officials enough time in office before they crucify them. I mean, it usually takes, in any job, three to six months to get your feet wet, let alone a high office job. We were talking about on that earlier question. Oh, yeah, and it's not, the news, it's just, it's not a matter of accuracy now. It's all just be first. You know, just say whatever you want, just say whatever we want, we'll say whatever opinion we want, present any quote-unquote facts, but then we can always just retract it and change it later. So it's not about accuracy. It's all about just being the first. And the whole thing about fake news, I mean, that's just zero credibility. If you don't have credibility on print, mobile, or online when you're saying something, you lose credibility. The whole thing about fake news and the CNN drama, that was not good either. Well, it's all clickbait material. Right. You know, it's all just it's the Internet uh, and all these little images, you know, uh, Virginia Beach drivers have you know gone enraged because of this one new law that affects insurance. It's it's all clickbait and it's a permeated into the news to where now it's just all quick little headlines and just to get you to quickly tune in for just a brief second. And that's how you can really slow down your phone or your computer when you hit these internet slugs, I call them, mm. and you go to these websites that like say, well. Kim Kardashian is now single again or something like yeah. that. Who cares? I really don't care. But TMZ is famous for that as well, too. I want to thank our great guest today, Harry Minium. We've had him on Sports Highlights as well. My interview show in Newport News that's regionally as well as online worldwide. Also Sports Scene. I also want to thank Ian Locke for his weekly segment from the Norfolk Tides. who are actually playing a lot better. Have won five of their last six games. And also Jennifer Brown from Community Nights talking about her volunteer organization as well. A lot more coming up in the weeks ahead on Sports Scene. Also want to welcome again Stratford today and their athletic program as they start basketball and football in the future as well and the USCAA right here as well. Sports Scene every Wednesday, 12 to 1. You can listen online, tunein.com by typing WHKT on your phone or your computer, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my TuneIn page. For more, go to gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link as well. And, of course, the Redskins preseason game on national TV will be August 27th against the Bengals on Fox. Hard to believe it's 25 days away. And that's really the preseason game that counts the most. So, hope you enjoy this beautiful weather. We finally got some good weather in Hampton Roads. No extreme heat, at least right now. Still need that air conditioning up as well. And, of course, enjoy the beach, the pool in the summer before it gets to be fall in Hampton Roads. Be kind to your neighbors. Be kind to your friends. And for Joe Daniel, I'm Greg Bickabaris. Happy Wednesday. We'll talk to you soon on Sports Scene. AM 1650 WHKT Portsmouth, 92.5 FM W223CT Norfolk. For your daily supply of news and talk, we are the answer.